What's happening, dunk heads? Um, I've been wanting to do something like this for years, basically. Um, people keep asking me when I, when I'm on nights out or, or even online, um, how I make my music, basically, and how how they're so clean or whatever. But firstly, thanks for the compliments. Anyway, um, people do it differently, I suppose. But um, after watching a lot of tutorials myself, um, this is how I do it. I use buses. Um, I've got my effects one, piano, pluck, pads, leads, vocal, bass, drums, and my kick. Now, my kick, as you can see there, it's actually uh, side chains to most of the buses if you'll see one two three four five and that's um side chain compressed with a uh, fab pro c2 um it's basically another way it, well i think it's the best way actually of side chaining uh people always ask me as well how, how do my kicks cut through they're uh, so good if you look here, um, I only use the main kick, which is what I make myself on kick two. Um, this is my own kick, so as you can see here, it says my kick. I've created that myself. Um, I'll show you what it's like just on its own. Uh, it's nice. But you need something under it, I think. Oh, hold on a minute. No, hold on. Right, this is what it's like without the underneath kick. And this is what I've got under it. Which is that. Um, this is what me pro cue looks like for the under kick. It's got that dark, um, bassy thing that that it was lacking. If you if you if you listen to this on its own, it's it's got a nice punch to it, but there's no bass. There's no bass going on at all. That's what it looks like. I've cut it at twenty. I've dropped a bit at a hundred. I've boosted a little bit at four thousand, and I've cut. At eight, about 18, 18 to 19,000. Um, so with them two together, this is what it is. It's nice, nice and full. Um, so if I play just the drums, this is what it sounds like. And here the kick, it's always the loudest. Um, my kick will always stay on six as well. Six dB. It'll never go higher than six because I think that's the sweet spot. Um, if you look at every tutorial as well, uh, online, that's what they'll say as well. Um uh, Another thing is as well, um, keep your low end, this is what I do anyway, I keep my low end the same on span, the same height as the high end, which you'll see here. See, it's nice and level. That's another thing I do as well. I don't know if anyone else does that. Um, but that's that, that's how I like to keep my tracks nice and level. Um, I, I hate it when uh, you hear a track. I've done it myself where you, you've you got too much high end or just too much low end. 
more than the other. But with this span, it's a it's a fucking godsend. See, it's it's all level. Um. What what else can I say about it? Uh, right, we'll move on now. Um, let's see. I'll show you how I do with drums. In fact, yeah. As you can see, yeah. Um. Right. There's me clap. Nothing special going on. I don't think. Just lay it twice. Uh, one. And then something under it. Um, right, so I've got my rides. Uh, shaker. See, I make my own shaker. Um, this is what it, that sounds like. So up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, it's just cut. Go there. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, that's a loop. Which I only use a little bit of, I think. Uh, another perk loop. Um, that's basically it for that. I've got a snare that creeps up. I do it vo uh, manually, the volume. That's what it all sounds like together. The dunk, I suppose. I use a sub layer, a middle layer, and a top layer most of the time. My sub layer is just a sub, sub sample. Um, this is what it looks like on the EQ. I've drastically cut the high ends off completely. Uh, and cut the lows to 50, around 58. Um, always in mono as well. That's what I forgot to say about the kick. The kick is always in mono too, because you want it right down the centre. You don't want it stereo width anywhere. You want it straight down the centre. Um, the, uh, the sub, I've got the tongue base here as well. That's cut to 60, which is just after the sub bass. Um, I made this sample, I think, as well, yeah, on Massive. Yeah, I made that myself on Massive, and just sampled it myself. Because I think if you use a VST as one of your bases, you get it. You get a bit. Um, you got it's a bit too more. It's a bit too stereo, I think. If you if you use the VST, so if you sample it. You can mono it a bit more better. Um, put a middle base at one, cut to one fifty. Boosted a bit of the high shelf. Um, that's also in mono as well. So this is what they all sound like together. Oh no! Hold on! Hold on! What's happened there? Right, hold on. Right. After the um. Put these filters on as well. Like, this is what they sound like. Um. Yeah. So they go to me, bass boss. Now this is the daddy. 
decapitator. Without it. With it. Just gives it a bit of a, a bit of distortion. What else do we use? Oh yeah, I use Pro MB. This cleans up the um, the low end. It just it make, makes the low end a lot more tight. And I've put another EQ on all the beasts. I've boosted the three hundred. Uh, that's just the filter. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, me plug. Yeah. Right, this is my chords, what I've made myself. Um, I think the track was in D minor. So, a quick way to do this, if anyone wants to know, is... I'll just put something empty on that. Uh, FL Studio, you've got helpers. So if you go to this here, minor uh, Aeolian, or whatever it's called, Click that, and you put it to whatever key you want, so when this one's D, that is all your keys uh, for your track. You can't you can't go out of sync then. You can't go out of key. So if you highlight it all, drag them over. See, they're all... They're all on the ghost markers, look. And then all you do, you just build it from there. So you start from D, and then you go pass one, and then F, pass one, A, pass one, C. And that's what it looks like. And you just do all that. And you get something like that. Um, let's see what else pads this is the same this is basically the same as the uh, plucks there but um, hold on right. it's basically the same but elongated I made that with Massive it's from a preset pack. I think it's a trans pack somewhere. Um, yeah, that's basically it. The vocal is an old... Um, I think it was a cashmere vocal, I think. If I remember. Yeah, it's just some old... It was recorded at 128 BPM. Anyway. Um, here's my chopped vocal. Well, I, I took that a cappella. I chopped it up to make it sound like this. Oh, yeah, I chopped it up. And then I, say, I bounced it back down to a wav. Uh, um, and then this is what it sounds like. <laughs> so yeah, it sounds a bit mad, but when you put it on the actual track itself, yeah, listen. Uh, 
Uh, I think it just gives it that bit, um, bit more extra. Um, trying to think what else I can show you. Oh yeah, there's people think. Yeah, I love me pianos. As everyone knows, um, this is what the piano sounds like when I made for it. Which is just M1 house piano. A little bit of release time added on. Uh, this is what the EQ looks like. And all that. Because I'm working in day, I've cut a day. I, I just think it gives it. Whatever key you're working in, I always cut the piano to that. And and the leads as well, to be honest with you. Um oh and also the acapella as well. I think it just it makes the track sound more smooth, I think, as well. Um sued, you have to get sued if you haven't got it. It cuts out all the all the bad frequencies. Without that, it'll just it'll sound a little bit too harsh, maybe. Yeah, I'll try it with it out with it off I mean, let's see. And then with it on. It's very subtle, but if you know what you're listening for, it does do a good job. Put a bit of stereo width on that as well. Again, uh, side chain compression. And multi-band compression as well. Just in the mids. Um, what else can I show you? Uh, my leads. That's it. I've got three different layers of leads. I'll show you individually now. Right. So there's the first one. There's the second. Third. And with the piano, it sits nicely under the piano. Um, oh yeah, I've got an RP job as well. It's basically the same chorded pattern, but it's chopped up and it's randomly selected as well. There's an option to do that here. If you wanted, um, you just make a chord and then you click your helpers, go to the arpeggiate, or you can press Alt A, and you can turn your chords into an arpeggio. Like a trance sound, um, I always put my pad back in with that. It fills it out a lot more. Listen to that with the leads and the piano. I think it gives it a lot of space. Uh, right, let's hear that. Yeah, I do like it when it's all blended in together. Uh, I just love it when you just you, you start off with nothing. Like a lot of the time, I'll just mess about making a piano riff or something like that. And then you just you, you what I do, I just copy mainly just the the chords that I've uh, made myself. I'll use it for everything. I'll switch it up as well, like say. I could move that up to up here or something like that. It's still in the same key. 
But it's the same but different. Um, I like to do stuff like that as well. Here's the second melody. Another one. Another one. Together. And all together. I think I changed that before I saved it again. I think I just need to turn it down a little bit there. Yeah, that's basically um, how I make it. Um, got some effects up here. I don't use many effects because I think if you if you put too many effects on, uh, with this music and how fast it is, I think you can spoil the um, the sound quality of it. So yeah, I, I only use a couple of uplifters and down and uh, impacts, down filters. Um, yeah, on the build up. That's a volume I've manipulated. Um, yeah, that's basically it, anyway. Um, I hope you've learned something, or or tell me I'm doing it wrong, or something like that, anyway. <laughs> All right, cheers.